aliens. There's been an invasion of aliens happening in the United States. A standoff between migrants and Texas state officials in Eagle Pass. No, not, not those aliens. Well, I mean, yeah, that, that's still happening too. But I mean these aliens. This right here is the Laugo Alien 9mm handgun. It's a sweet piece, very expensive, and something I've had my eye on for years now, since basically it came out. And today I'm very happy to say I have one. So today we're gonna talk about what makes it worth the price tag, if it's worth the price tag, and why this is probably the weirdest handgun I own. Aliens. Okay, thank God we're out of ammo, because uh, if you look behind you, we've run out of places to move back. It's an accurate handgun. Now, just because I think it's funny and it might piss off the purists, I'm gonna take what is now the most expensive handgun that I own. I don't think that's an exaggeration, I think that's actually true. Take the most expensive handgun I own and feed it the cheapest, shitty 9mm wolf I could find. Because you know, I had an old saying on the channel, you guys might remember, if it can't handle the steel, it doesn't deserve the brass, so. See if she, uh, see how she shoots. Eat it like a champ and beg for seconds. All right, we can keep it, we can keep feeding her brass. She, she earned it. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Laugo, the Laugo Alien. For real though, what is the Alien? The Laugo is a nine millimeter semi-automatic race gun with a very, very unique operating system, which makes this gun super cool. One of the biggest things that they bragged about when this thing first hit the market is how little recoil it has. Now, in my opinion, they kind of overhyped this when they first came to market. They, they kind of made it sound like a, a zero recoil kind of gun, but it's really neat the way that they go about it. I, I actually still genuinely like it. The first time I fired it, <laughs> I was like, man, for, for over five grand, this better be, okay, I get it. For being a non-compensated handgun that doesn't weigh like eight pounds, this thing does a really good job of mitigating recoil. And yes, to reiterate, this is a, a $5,000 gun, uh, but you know, you can tell it's cool because it comes with this nice case full of shit. It is actually really cool though because it comes with, you know, obviously your extra magazines and stuff, but it comes with a totally separate top rail that is iron sights, or realistically, it comes with a separate top rail that has an optic with it. Everyone should be able to shoot iron sights, but everybody shoots better with a dot. That's why for the most of this video, I have this bad boy on here. I like red dots and I cannot lie. Fellas, yeah. Now this isn't really a review per se. I, I hate that word. I don't like doing reviews. I'm a gun nerd. I think guns, gun operating systems, gun history, stuff like that's really cool. Just because this is a modern company, I guess that kind of is what makes it feel weird. There's a reason I typically stick to, you know, historic weapons where I usually can't even speak the language of the company who built it and where the designer is dead. So like Glock. So yeah, I got paid zero dollars for this. Uh, Laugo did send the gun, but they didn't, you know, it wasn't on the condition I did a video. I've just been wanting to do a video on one of these forever. You guys know me. I have been sitting on Gun Broker for years with my finger hovering over the trigger of possibly buying one of these. So when they reached out, I immediately said yes. So let's go over the manual of arms. So the, the aliens, the aliens fucking weird. Aren't we all? It's like your typical handgun. The entire slide uh, moves, like you could rack it off the optic. You know, you've got a lot of options here because the entire slide is, you know, it's just kind of one piece up top. The Alien is not like that. So you've got this top rail here uh, that doesn't move while the gun fires, which is really cool because your optic stays in one place. And where it latches onto is tethered to the barrel. So that theoretically should be really good for your gun maintaining zero. I've even swapped between these while filming this video, did not re-zero the dot, and we were making hits at some pretty good distance. Speaking of the distance, if you can't tell, we are at Desperado Resort today. Thanks to Demolition Ranch for allowing us to use the property. So to say thank you to Matt, uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel. <laughs> I'm sure he appreciates it. Seriously though, thanks to Matt for allowing us to use his properties. Uh, you know, helps us with filming range days when we have a place to film that, you know, isn't just, you know, getting into gang wars in downtown San Antonio. So anyway, yeah, slide moves back like so. You have your slide catch here on the left side, just like a normal, you know, typical handgun. Also access the slide release. There is no safety. In terms of safety, we have no safety. I mean, you technically have a safety in the way that a Glock has a safety, like, you know, you've got this trigger safety where you have to depress this piece of steel in the middle to be able to fire. Which speaking of that, this trigger is one of the best triggers I have ever felt 
on a gun that does not have an exposed hammer. It is real nice. Nice. Like when I first picked this up after getting it out of the box, that trigger right off the bat impressed the hell out of me. Now, another thing I find interesting is that it is made by Laugo Arms, Czechoslovakia, a country I was under the impression didn't exist anymore. We say Zimbabwe now, don't we? Do we? ADD break. On today's episode of what in the hell has Matt been doing out here? Just a fucking face on the table. Feels like that episode of The Office. So I don't think there's any doubt that a nine millimeter handgun like this alien here is going to punch through a white claw. So I figured we'd make it a little scientific, change things up. Not that we haven't always been scientific. Not that we went anywhere. So we've got two white claws here for the purpose of testing the difference in expansion between full metal jacket and Fiocchi frangible. Frangible ammunition, if you're not familiar, is a special bonded bullet that's meant to disintegrate when it hits its target, meaning it's, it makes it safer to shoot things like steel from a really close range because you're not worried about frag and spalling coming back and, and hitting somebody. A frangible is usually used for things like, again, shooting steel up close, but the interesting part about it disintegrating like that is that you're also dumping 100% of your energy immediately, making it kind of a gnarly de facto hollow point. So will a white claw be enough to demonstrate that? I don't know, let's find out together. All right, shooting a white claw with a nine millimeter handgun for obviously the first time in this channel's history in three, two, one. Probably should be more worried about spilling an alcoholic beverage on this you know, five and a half thousand dollar gun, but I'm really not. Now for the Fiocchi frangible. Let's see what the damage difference is in three, two, one. All right, that actually, that did seem to be a bit more explosive. All right, no magazine, unloaded, showing clear. We're safe, boy. All right, so the frange definitely uh, spewed a lot more white claw back at me, which makes me think that like the inside of the can was a lot more just violently uh, exploding outward. But it's also, you can tell uh, that it kicked a lot farther away because uh, the first white claw, the, uh, the lime here, just kind of barely knocked it off the table. Most of the energy went through and into our, our nice berm here that uh, Mr. Character has built. The second white claw just, yeah, ripped, ripped apart and it kicked it all the way back here. Uh, I don't even know where the top half went, to be honest. Oh, did it come back at me? Shit. Oh yeah, nope, sure enough it did. Holy crap, I didn't even see that. Yeah, top half ended over here somehow. So is frangible a better ammunition than, uh, than full metal jacket for self-defense or for home defense? I don't know, it's not my job to tell you shit like that. I just know it makes a white claw explode. So let's break down what's going on under the hood. Get up inside that alien. Not, not like that. Anyhow, you start out by pushing this pin up front, pulling that out, and this then allows you to push forward and remove your top rail here. What is really interesting about this is that it has a hammer located in this top rail. It's, it's funky. So it's technically hammer fired, I guess, but you depress this here and this hammer slams forward. So depressing this hammer again, this is how it would look firing inside the gun. It's like a normal hammer, but upside down. What a neat little piece of weapon design. You already know. If you're interested in getting your start in gunsmithing and weapons technology, you can check out sdi.edu. We're in the t-shirt today. Links are in the description and in the pinned comment. So next up, we have the inner workings of the gun. So we still have our slide here, but now you can see we have two rods up front. That's super interesting. I wonder what's going on there. Well, the left one here is our op rod, recoil spring, whatever you'd like to call it. To the right, we have, in my opinion, what makes this gun so damn cool. That is the gas piston, except just like the hammer, it's upside down or at least backwards. Now where a normal gas piston, let's say on an AK or something like that, you're feeding gas from the front of the gun into a piston, which actuates you know, the bolt carrier or what have you on, depending on the particular firearm. On the Laugo Alien, it's actually bleeding off gas and pushing it into this piston keeping the slide forward, trying to keep the gun in battery for longer. This does a number of things, one of which is apparently cutting down on recoil, but for the second, you can have a fixed barrel, unlike something like a Glock, or really any weapon that would require the barrel to either rotate or tilt downward 
uh, to, to actuate the weapon, which is most semi-automatic pistols. For example, on a Glock, you can see that when it unlocks, the barrel tilts starting at the chamber here. And when you're fully locked open, you could see the barrel clearly pointing skyward a little bit. Now on a weapon like this, does that considerably affect recoil? No, but when you're trying to milk every advantage you can, and when you're working with a price tag like this, a fixed barrel does help, at least theoretically. But when you start stacking things like a fixed barrel, a fixed optic, you start to see some things stack up that might make this a very accurate handgun. Now this gas delay system isn't new. This is actually something that you've seen a few other times in firearm history, including the HK P7. Yes, the gun Hans Gruber used in Die Hard. yippee Now another feature of this handgun that a lot of the competition guys will cream themselves over is that low bore axis, which is just the relation to where the barrel of the gun is to the rest of the handgun. Compared to something like a 1911 or a Glock, this bore is super low, which is really neat. Because unlike, say, a Glock or a 1911, the operating system is actually on top of the gun, which should, again, help with a lot of the recoil mitigation. So now that we've talked about some of the things that make this gun so cool, the question is, how does it stack up against other handguns? So to make it a fair comparison for the Laugo Alien, I figured I would compare it with a gun in a, in a similar price range, not quite as expensive, but still very nice. So this is my Staccato XC. And uh, up to now, this has been, I think, the, it still probably is the favorite handgun I've got. I just have so much trigger time on it. Very nice guns. My favorite handgun, at least in the 1911, 2011 kind of space. If I was to do it again, I'd probably get the XL, but dude, this is uh, that's nitpicking. The XC is, seriously, it is, it is a very, very nice gun. And of course, 2011, that slide, butter, butter smooth. So I figured we'd do a side-by-side -side comparison just to see like the recoil, how the gun shoots, uh, comparing the Alien directly to the Staccato XC, and also my carry gun, which I will show you shortly, but I guarantee you it will not <laughs> It'll not perform nearly as well as either of these two guns because they're they're more, you know, comp guns, race guns. They're just, they're built to be nice. So your carry gun, I don't think should be a prim and proper safe queen, you know? I think it should be more of a, a dirty slut that just does anything you tell it to do. I don't feel great about that comparison, so let's just go ahead and get shooting. Got a handful of rounds in the Alien. Next up, the Staccato XC. Also very nice, very flat, big fan. Comparing the trigger, I think the trigger on the XC is a little better, uh, but I have to give credit to the Alien for having the best trigger pull for any non-exposed hammer-fired gun I have ever shot in my life. Now, if you'll excuse me for a moment. Excuse me while I whip this out. The Glock 43X. This has kind of become my daily carry gun just because the best gun to carry is the gun that you'll actually carry. So while I do love my, my Glock 19 uh, that, that's all decked out, I find myself more and more just kind of reaching for the 43X just because it's just so small and it doesn't print hardly at all. Just really easy to carry around on a day-to-day -day basis. Still has an optic on top and carries 11 rounds of nine millimeters, so I love this one. A lot snappier, <laughs> trigger pulls, not nearly as good. Striker fire, it's a factory Glock trigger. You can probably see in the, in the slower version that this gun is kind of trying to jump out of my hands a lot more. There's a lot of things that, that play into that. Uh, the lockup system, the fact that this is a smaller gun, it's a lighter gun. But while this is a gun that I do trust on a daily basis, it is not near the race gun status of the Staccato or the Alien. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Laugo Alien. Thanks to Laugo USA for hooking me up with this bad boy. Thanks to the Czechs for making this motherfucker. Thanks to Matt Carricker for allowing us to use the beautiful ranch out here. And thanks to God for giving us a beautiful day to film on because it has been really really fucking cold lately. Texas cold, the pipes freeze, people freak out. It, I don't want to hear it from you Minnesotans, you don't count. I pick, I pick, I kid. I love you guys, I love all of you for watching, and I love all of you for being subscribed and with that notification bell on, because you don't want to miss cool uploads like this one. I appreciate you staying to the end of the video, and as always, I will see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in Vegas next week, maybe. I don't know, I'll be there. Bye. Fuel is my obsession to make the perfect weapon like us put things right to the top. But I can't let you get stuck, get stuck, get stuck, get stuck, get stuck, get stuck.
I take a deep breath beforehand, fuck. Okay. Put this in the dirt and piss off everybody who wants one. So we have two different white claws here for the purpose of testing the difference between 9mm full metal jacket and Fiocchi 